Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by the limiting reagent. You should then be able to use the idea of the limiting reagent in a chemical reaction. OK, I'm showing you here a simple chemical reaction. We're reacting ethene with chlorine to make dichloroethane. Now remember that we do not write the number 1 in balanced equations, but I'm going to write them this time to illustrate a point. Now what this equation tells us is that ethene and chlorine react in a ratio of 1 mole to 1 mole. So imagine I take one mole of ethene and react it with one mole of chlorine. When the reaction is finished, there'll be no ethene and no chlorine left over. Now imagine I do the same reaction again, but this time I'm using one mole of ethene and 1.5 moles of chlorine. In this case, the reaction will finish when all of the ethene has reacted. The one mole of ethene will have reacted with one mole of chlorine. This means that when the reaction is finished, we will still have 0.5 moles of chlorine left over. In this case, we would call the chlorine the excess reagent, and that's because there's some unreacted chlorine left over at the end of the reaction. In this case, the ethene would be called the limiting reagent. In any chemical reaction, the limiting reagent is the chemical which is used up first. Once the limiting reagent's used up, the reaction stops. Now, the limiting reagent's really important, because the amount in moles of the limiting reagent determines the amount of product that we make. In this case, the reaction would produce one mole of dichloroethane. OK, here's the same reaction, but this time I've changed the starting amounts of the reactants. We're still starting with one mole of ethene, but now the amount of chlorine is 0.5 moles. I'd like you to work out the limiting reagent and the excess reagent. I'd then like you to calculate the amount of the excess reagent left over when the reaction is finished, and the amount of product that we make. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, in this case, the reaction will stop when the chlorine has all reacted. When the reaction stops, we will still have 0.5 moles of ethene unreacted. So in this case, the chlorine is the limiting reagent, and the ethene is the excess reagent. Because the chlorine is the limiting reagent, the amount in moles of chlorine will determine the amount of product that we make. So in this case, we'll make 0.5 moles of dichloroethane. Coming up, we'll look at how to deal with more complex reactions. OK, here's a more complicated reaction. In this case, we're reacting calcium with oxygen to make calcium oxide. As you can see, calcium reacts with oxygen in a 2 to 1 molar ratio. And for every 2 moles of calcium that react, we make 2 moles of calcium oxide. OK, in this case, I'm going to react 0.75 moles of calcium with 0.25 moles of oxygen. So how do we work out the limiting reagent and the excess reagent in this case? Looking at our first reagent, we have 0.75 moles of calcium. The equation tells us that 2 moles of calcium would react with 1 mole of oxygen. This means that 0.75 moles of calcium would react with 0.375 moles of oxygen. However, in this case, we've only got 0.25 moles of oxygen. This makes oxygen the limiting reagent, as this will be used up first. Remember that the amount in moles of the limiting reagent determines the amount of product that we form. Looking at the equation, we can see that 1 mole of oxygen leads to 2 moles of calcium oxide. We know that 0.25 moles of oxygen are reacting, so this means that we can make 0.5 moles of calcium oxide. Now, not all of the calcium will react, so this makes calcium the excess reagent. We can calculate how much calcium is left over by looking at the chemical equation. The equation tells us that 2 moles of calcium react with 1 mole of oxygen. We know that 0.25 moles of oxygen reacted, so this tells us that 0.5 moles of calcium must have taken part in the reaction. We started with 0.75 moles of calcium. 0.5 moles of calcium reacted so 0.25 moles of calcium must be left over. Here's another reaction. I'm reacting aluminium with chlorine to form aluminium chloride. In this case, I'm going to use 3 moles of aluminium and 6 moles of chlorine. I'd like you to determine the limiting reagent and calculate the amount in moles of product formed. I'd then like you to determine the amount of excess reagent left over. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, we're using 3 moles of aluminium in our reaction. Looking at the chemical equation, we can see that 2 moles of aluminium would react with 3 moles of chlorine. We have 3 moles of aluminium, so that will react with 4.5 moles of chlorine. As you can see, we've got 6 moles of chlorine, 
So this makes chlorine the excess reagent, as some will be left over when the reaction finishes. Aluminium is our limiting reagent, as this will all react. So when our reaction stops, there will be no aluminium left over. Looking at the equation, we can see that two moles of aluminium will make two moles of aluminium chloride. We know that three moles of aluminium are reacting, so we will make three moles of aluminium chloride. OK, so how much chlorine will be left over? Well, as we saw before, three moles of aluminium react with 4.5 moles of chlorine. This means that when the reaction stops, we will still have 1.5 moles of chlorine unreacted. OK, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by the limiting reagent and use the idea of the limiting reagent in chemical reactions. Mm -hmm.